Well, good afternoon. Yesterday, our province entered the first stage of reopening. Thousands of retail shops opened, thousands of people are working. Ontario small businesses owners are opening their doors. They're adapting to the new normal. And as they do, we're working with our key partners to protect everyone's health and safety. And we're watching the trends like a hawk right now. We're watching the rate of the spread. We're watching closely for any sudden surges or flare-ups. And I want people to know, I want to be crystal clear, that I'm fully prepared to take every action necessary. If we see things going in the wrong direction, we'll be fully prepared. We won't hesitate to roll things back if necessary. And I'm hopeful we won't go there, but we need to be ready for all possible scenarios. That's why it's more important than ever that we stay vigilant. We can't let our guard down now. Thanks to the hard work of our Minister of Labour, we have over 90 guidelines in place to help these businesses open safely and responsibly. And as we start to reopen, we know more people are taking public transit. More people are going to stores. More people are going outside. And as we continue to open more of the economy, as we weather improves, we need to remember that our best defense, our best protection against this deadly virus is continuing to follow the public health measures, staying at home and away from others if you're feeling ill, Practic practicing social distancing by staying at least two meters apart, washing your hands often, cleaning frequently touched surfaces, and continuing to work from home if possible. And if you're going out for necessities, or if you're taking public transit and you can't keep two meters apart, we recommend that you wear a non-medical mask or a face covering. As the chief medical officer has said, anything that covers your nose and mouth can help protect you and people around you. And I know that everyone is asking, when can I see our family? When can we see our friends? When can social gatherings begin again? The Chief Medical Officer has been very clear, and the guidance on social gatherings remains the same. We can't have more than five people from outside your household right now. We need to keep using common sense, whether it's families visiting relatives or friends by car or sitting outside on a driveway two meters apart from each other. I can understand if someone wants to drop off groceries, throw a ball around with a friend, or help an older parent with chores around the house. And I can't stress this enough. To stop the spread of this deadly virus, the best line of defense is staying two meters apart. So when in doubt, keep that golden rule in mind, because the virus can only spread as far as we allow it. And by working together, we will protect each other, and we will get through this. Thank you, and God bless the people of Ontario. Now I'll hand it over to Minister Elliott. Thank you, Premier, and good afternoon. Thanks to the considerable efforts of all Ontarians, we are now at a point where we can begin to gradually and carefully reopen our province. There is no question we are making progress, but we can never lose sight of the simple fact that our province has done so because we have followed the advice of our public health experts. The best line of defence against COVID-19 hasn't changed. Keep practicing physical distancing by staying two meters or six feet away from others outside of your household. But as we begin to reopen the province, it won't always be practical or possible to do so. Taking the of Health is now recommending that you use a face covering when keeping your distance might or won't be possible. Please do not use medical masks. These should be reserved for healthcare workers, those providing direct care, and first responders. Instead, you should use a cloth mask. Your face covering should fit securely with ties or ear loops and be made of at least two layers of tightly woven material. It should be large enough to completely and comfortably cover your nose and mouth without gaping 
and be able to main it, maintain its shape after washing and drying if it's reusable. If you're unsure or have questions, we've made resources available at ontario.ca backslash coronavirus. Please don't hesitate to use them to protect yourself, your loved ones, and your community. Together, following the advice of our public health experts, we will continue to stop the spread of COVID-19 and protect the health and well-being of all Ontarians. Nothing is more important. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Bon après-midi à tous. Making sure that public services like transit are available is essential for successfully reopening the province and restarting our economy. That's why the health and well-being of all transit workers and passengers is a top priority for our government. On the advice of Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, we are recommending anyone travelling on public transit wear a face covering to help stop the spread of COVID-19. However, there are exceptions. Face coverings should not be placed on or used by children under the age of two, anyone who has trouble breathing, and anyone who is unable to remove it without assistance. In addition to the face coverings, health officials are recommending all transit agencies put the following measures in place. Allow for physical distancing by admitting fewer passengers and using physical markers between seats. Ensure the availability of alcohol-based hand sanitizer upon entering and exiting the vehicle. Implement engineering controls like plexiglass barriers between drivers and passengers and enhance cleaning of high-touch areas. Sur les conseils du médecin hygiéniste en chef de l'Ontario, nous recommandons à toute personne voyageant en transport en commun de porter un couvre-visage pour aider à freiner la propagation de la COVID-19. Il y a cependant des exceptions. Les couvre-visages ne doivent pas être posés ou utilisés par les enfants de moins de deux ans, par toute personne ayant des difficultés respiratoires et par toute personne incapable de les enlever sans aide. En plus des couvre-visages, les responsables de la santé recommandent à tous les organismes de transport en commun de mettre en place les mesures suivantes. Permettre la distanciation physique en transportant moins de passagers et en utilisant des repères physiques entre les sièges. Veillez à ce qu'un désinfectant pour les mains à base d'alcool soit disponible à l'entrée et à la sortie du véhicule. Mettre en place des contrôles physiques, comme des barrières en plexiglas, entre le conducteur et les passagers. Et améliorer le nettoyage des zones où le contact est fréquent. As more people start taking transit again, these public health measures will help keep everyone safe. We are also working closely with the Ontario Public Transit Association and other stakeholders on a clear set of guidelines for transit agencies, which will be coming soon. I want to thank our transit agencies for all that they do to support our communities in this time of need. Thank you. Je vous remercie. We'll go to the phone line for questions. First question. First question comes from Travis Danrash from Global News. Please go ahead. Hi there. Good afternoon, uh, Premier. Hi, and Travis. Sir. Um, do you think Ontario businesses and public transit should make it mandatory to have customers wear masks, and not just uh, a recommendation? Um, and we saw the Prime Minister wearing a mask coming to Parliament today. He says that he is going to be uh, using a mask, uh, putting one on when he cannot physical distance. Uh, are we going to see you doing the same thing in your ministers? Well, any time I go out in public, as over at uh, William Osler, wear a mask when I was handing out meals at the mosque, as wearing masks. So any time I go out in public, I I put a, a mask on. I think it's the right thing to do and. When possible, we highly, highly recommend that uh, people wear a mask. It protects themselves and it protects other people around them. But the golden rule, is, as uh, Dr. Williams has always said, uh, practice the two two meters, um, and that, that's that's critical. But I would highly recommend that people wear uh, a mask when when possible. Okay, and uh, as a follow-up on transit, uh, many people are going to be hesitant to take public transit even after the economy is fully reopened uh, and ridership 
could not fully rebound, may not fully rebound in the next couple of months, even perhaps the next few years. Is the government prepared to offer financial assistance to organizations like the CTC? Well, we, we need uh, the support of the federal government uh, when we, we talk about the the transit. They've been, they've been great so far and we're in, in talks with the federal government right now regarding that. But we, we have the largest, one of the largest trans, transit systems in, in North America, I think second to New York, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, we have a large transit system. A lot of people use it, rely on it, and uh, we'll be asking support uh, from the, the federal government. Next question. Next question comes from Lucas Meyer from News Talk 1010. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, Premier, what about those who might have financial issues or other issues acquiring masks? I mean, if, if, the, if there's been access issues and there's been a major supply problem, what about those who may have difficulty acquiring those materials? Well, I, again, uh, face covering is, is better than uh, no uh, face covering at all. So we, we recommend a, a face covering when possible, non-medical, meaning uh, don't, don't use the N95 masks. If you have them, leave those for the, the healthcare workers, surgical uh, masks. Uh, but the non-medical uh, masks, you can still, they look like the surgical masks. Uh, you, you'll be able to... Uh, yeah, I use those, but any any face covering is better than uh, none at all. And Premier, I have a question on uh, testing. We had uh, an infectious disease specialist from U of T uh, on our air yesterday, and basically said, with the amount of we're doing right now, um, we may be setting the stage for potentially a second wave. Um, I mean, even if we hit our capacity every day for the next four weeks, we'll we'll be at over a million, and of course, the population of 14 million, and it's you know a two to four week potentially to stage two. So, I mean, what, are you, what can you do to assure the public that enough testing is happening and is going to continue aside from what's already happened? So I, I, I recognize that the numbers weren't there, kind of shocked me too, but in saying that, we have a strong plan, a strong plan to ramp up the testing. Uh, I just got off the phone with, uh, you know, uh, Mr. Anderson, Matt Anderson from Ontario Health. We had a great discussion today on the health table uh, as well. We're going to ramp up the testing, but I'm going to pass this over to the, the Minister of Health. Well, as the Premier has indicated, we are ramping up the testing um, across the board with all of the uh, public health units. We want to make sure that um, people who uh, have symptoms of COVID-19 uh, can go to an assessment centre and will be tested. Previously, it was more or less in the clinical judgment of the person at the assessment centre. But now, if people have symptoms, they want to be tested, they will be tested. So that is really important from a community perspective as we're opening the economy so we can see what the effect is on the, the public health system and, and the health of people in different communities. We have also identified certain communities that we uh, know um, are very vulnerable to um, COVID-19, our retirement homes, our congregate populations, group homes, shelters and so on. And there are also pockets of areas in Ontario where we know that uh, there are larger numbers of COVID-19 just based on some of the testing that we've done in the past. So we're looking at solutions for that, how we can get teams in there quickly and do that testing to, uh, to make sure that we really understand what's happening in the community because as Dr. Williams has indicated and as we know ourselves, we can't open things up to stage two until we can fully assess what the effects of stage one are in the community. So testing becomes all the more important and we do have a plan to ramp it up considerably. Next question. Next question comes from Cynthia Mulligan from City TV. Please go ahead. Hello, Premier. Hi, you said the government is watching the numbers like a hawk. Data does suggest that we could be potentially going backwards. New cases or recoveries, uh, the, sorry, the, the rolling average of daily cases has been going up marginally acknowledge mm -hmm. that, but new cases are outnumbering recovered cases. Mm -hmm. This is a concern. At what point would you hold off on phase two? And at what point would you possibly consider rolling back phase one? Well, we, we have no certain date for stage two right now. Cynthia, we're relying on, again, the chief medical officer and the health team to 
to tell us when they feel we could open up uh, stage two and and we're going to monitor it and yes we're going to watch it like a hawk and and we're relying on the advice from our, our health table to give you a, an exact number I, I can't give you an exact number but uh, if the cases are going up it's uh, it'll be concerning to say the least and I won't hesitate I won't hesitate to roll things back again our uh, the health and well-being of this people of this province are my number one priority over over anything so we'll we'll keep a sharp eye on it but but has a bar been set premier on on what point you would have to consider rolling back has that conversation been had with you from the command table uh, right now we don't have one specific uh, number uh, again we're going to keep an eye on it and if we see the the numbers start spiking we'll we'll roll things back in a in a heartbeat i'm just not going to not going to chance it and uh, we're we're going to continue the the testing we're going to ramp up this testing uh, like this province has never seen another three four weeks uh, we're, we're going to do a lot of testing i can i can stand here and promise you that i'm going to be all over this testing to make sure we continue testing uh, people uh, the, especially healthcare workers in long term care uh, I know we just completed the the testing of the patients and the and the healthcare workers, but that doesn't mean we walk away and we don't test them. We we have to continuously uh, test, especially the the uh, frontline healthcare uh, workers in long term care. Next question. Next question comes from Matt Simard from CBC. Please go ahead. Oh hi, my question hi, is Matt. for Minister Mulroney. Alors, c'est une question en français. Je veux savoir euh, pourquoi ne pas rendre le masque obligatoire dans les transports en commun? Je sais que vous, on en a parlé un petit peu en anglais, mais euh, pourquoi ne pas le rendre obligatoire? Vous pourriez demander à tous les usagers de se couvrir avec un masque, tout simplement. Pourquoi ne pas l'avoir fait? Eh bien, depuis le début, on suit les conseils du médecin hygiéniste en chef de l'Ontario euh, qui nous donne ses recommandations. Et ces recommandations, c'est l'usage que l'usage soit recommandé, fortement recommandé. Alors, c'est ce que nous faisons. Nous, euh, nous recommandons fortement aux Ontariens et aux Ontariennes, surtout quand ils utilisent le transport en commun, d'utiliser des couvre-visages. Et comme follow-up, euh, la, la Commission de transport de Toronto est en difficulté financière. Il y a d'autres sociétés de transport qui doivent aussi composer avec une baisse importante de leurs revenus, maintenant qu'il y a beaucoup moins de personnes qui utilisent le transport en commun. Euh, Êtes-vous en discussion avec des sociétés de transport pour leur fournir une aide gouvernementale, les aider au cours des prochains mois? Eh bien, depuis le début de cette pandémie, euh, les sociétés de transport en commun partout dans la province euh, éprouvent de grandes difficultés. Euh, avec la baisse euh, du nombre de passagers, euh, ça a eu un impact important sur les revenus. Et donc, euh, depuis le début de la pandémie, je suis en conversation euh, de façon régulière avec les intervenants de, de ce secteur. Euh, nous a, et je sais, c'est très clair, ils ont besoin d'assistance, euh, mais ce n'est pas un problème qui est unique à l'Ontario, c'est un problème qui existe partout à travers le Canada. Euh, donc, euh, comme problème national, euh, d'envergure nationale, cela nécessite euh, une réponse de façon nationale aussi. Next question. Next question comes from Colin DeMello from CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi there. Good afternoon, Hi. Premier. Um, we've been speaking with businesses who want to reopen, but they don't have money to pay for the safeguards like plexiglass because um, obviously they haven't had income for the last little bit. So what should those businesses do? And is the government looking at creating some type of fund for those businesses to tap into to pay for things like plexiglass and PPE? Well, um, what I've, I've heard out in the, uh, the market there, uh, plexiglass is a little more tough to, to come by, but it's still relatively inexpensive. You, you can get a piece of plexiglass for under $50, roughly, just a, a piece like that. So, um, again, hopefully they'll be able to find a solution, or even uh, I've even went into stores calling that they have the kind of the roll-down plasticky, the clear plastic that's even less expensive. But if they could uh, do their best on, on getting some sort of covering there, transparent covering, uh, that would be very beneficial. And, and then putting uh, tape on the ground, and I think that's relatively uh, reasonable. But I understand the situation they're in. They've been, they've been really stressed out. They haven't been able to get sales. They don't have the money. And that's the reason we're, we're trying to uh, put a, a great package, or we have put a great package together on uh, the, the support, on the rent subsidy, and, 
and other deferrals of taxes. So we're going to continue working with them because I, I understand they've went through a real, real struggle, and that's why I'm so adamant about these uh, landlords supporting these small business owners. Thank you, Premier. And, and just on the masking issue, um, I can remember all the way back in January and early February, I mean, we had asked the Chief Medical Officer of Health, should people be wearing masks? Because we had seen people out in the public wearing masks. And, and the advice back then was, no, it's unnecessary. It doesn't really protect you uh, from, from much. I, I'm curious why now, on, on May 20th, we're so far into this pandemic, is the government now saying, yeah, it's a good idea for you to wear masks. What, what is it about this particular time and going forward that you guys have determined that a mask is necessary? Well, the situation's fluid. I'm going to pass it over to the, the Minister of Health to, to answer that. Well, Dr. Williams has always said that wearing a mask doesn't necessarily protect you from COVID-19, but it will protect others from you. And so previously it wasn't necessary because we were asking people to stay home, stay inside, only go outside if absolutely necessary to get food or to get medicine. The situation has changed now with the opening somewhat of the economy. More people will be out, outdoors and outside. And there may be situations where they can't maintain the physical distancing, which continues to be the golden rule. The two meters are six feet for people to stay apart. But we recognize that with public transit, for example, that might not be possible. So that's why Dr. Williams is recommending that the, uh, the face mask be worn now to, uh, to protect other people from you. You may be asymptomatic, but perhaps carrying COVID-19, not have any idea of it. So this is for the, for the general population's uh, protection as we open up the economy more and more. Next question. Next question comes from Emily Pelletier from LaDroit. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, my question is for Minister Mulroney. Uh, oh. Du, euh, du service très léger d'Ottawa euh, va pas se faire après la fin de l'été, euh, même si les travaux ont pu se faire. Euh, Emily, je me demandais si cette question OK. La fiabilité du service du très léger d'Ottawa ne s'améliorera pas avant la fin de l'été, même si les travaux ont pu être accélérés pendant qu'ils fonctionnent au ralenti. Est-ce que cette situation-là vous préoccupe et qu'est-ce que ça prendrait pour euh, une intervention de votre part? Euh, je n'ai pas compris le début de la question. Je pense que vous posez une question à propos du train léger à Ottawa euh, et euh, si les travaux avancent. Euh, C'est un, 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 un projet municipal. Nous regardons bien sûr de très près les, les développements, euh, mais maintenant que nous procédons vers la réouverture de l'économie, les projets euh, municipaux vont recommencer aussi. Euh, donc, on va continuer à suivre le projet. Euh, Est-ce qu'il va falloir revoir les façons, selon vous, de faire des systèmes de transport en commun de masse, comme le train léger d'Ottawa ou, euh, par exemple, le métro de Toronto où les gens sont entassés durant des heures de pointe à, dans, dans le cadre de la crise de la santé publique qu'on vit en ce moment? Euh, encore, je n'ai pas très bien compris, j'ai mal entendu la question, mais il me semble que vous pouvez vous demander si euh, les gens vont être tassés sur les autobus euh, dans le transport en commun ou les métros. Euh, voici ce que le médecin hygiéniste en chef euh, a, a écrit aujourd'hui. Elle a proposé euh, des mesures qui sont nécessaires pour protéger les, les passagers et ceux qui travaillent dans le transport en commun. Donc, une certaine distanciation physique d'au moins deux mètres, le port de couvre-visage et aussi d'autres mesures nécessaires parce que c'est absolument indispensable en, en vue du fait qu'on est en train de progresser vers une plus grande ouverture de l'économie, on espère euh, que ces mesures soient intégrées dans, euh, dans le nouveau normal euh, de l'opération des réseaux de transport en commun. Next question. Next question comes from Ji Yan Lee from CP24. Please go ahead. Hi there. This question Hi. is for the Premier. Yes. Um, just wanted to get some more clarity regarding summer camps. I know that yesterday you had mentioned that the overnight camps will be canceled. Regarding a day summer camp, uh, we're, spe we're talking specifically private camp operators because we know the city of Toronto um, has canceled its uh, yep. summer camp. Will they 
be able to go ahead or is it a wait and see and you're just hoping that it could proceed for July and August? Uh, we just want some clarity because uh, there sure. seems to be a lot of confusion regarding that. Yeah, well, we're, we're going to go by the, the numbers right now. We're, we're hoping that the uh, kids are going to be able to go to day camp through July and August. And I, I wish I could tell you uh, a month down the road or a month and a week down the road where we're going to be at. Unfortunately, I, I can't, but right now we're, we're gearing up the kids going to uh, day camp with some very, very strict uh, protocols in, in place. And I, I apologize. I just I, I just don't know where we're going to be in, in five weeks. I'm, I'm an optimist, so hopefully we'll, we'll continue uh, showing some positive results. Okay, and then a question regarding the independent uh, commission going into the long-term care yes. homes. You had also mentioned that uh, you would review congregate settings as well, mm. such as um, group homes, retirement homes. Will this be a separate review, um, an independent review, a formal review, and if so, when? Well, right right now, uh, Minister Smith is actually uh, looking through the, the whole process right right now. We're going to continue uh, doing that in congregate uh, living areas, but it's going to be separate from the long-term care, and uh, everything's on the table uh, from any congregate uh, care living area we're going to be reviewing i'm going to be reviewing procurement going to be going through uh, the commission when it comes to long-term care uh, we need to look at the whole system and make sure that uh, we we have the proper protocols in place if this ever happens again and we, we are we are prepared we've come such a long way and it's not the government i'm i'm talking about i'm talking about everyone in ontario the 14 and a half million people uh, and, and the health table and all the doctors and nurses and PSWs and, and so on and so forth. Everyone's come a long way. We've learned a tremendous amount, but we, we have a long way to go still. Uh, we're, we're nowhere close to uh, finishing this fight against COVID-19. We have to be vigilant and stay focused, but uh, every, everything's uh, top to bottom is going to be reviewed. There's, there's, a, there's, you know, through this crisis, uh, everyone feels there's there's an opportunity to make things better, and we are going to make them better. Last question. Last question comes from Julianne Lamoureux from Radio Canada. Please go ahead. Hi, Julianne. Yes, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Premier. Uh, my question is also for Minister Maloroni. Alors, Madame la Ministre, euh, donc vous ne rendez pas le, le port du masque obligatoire dans les endroits publics. Est-ce que vous craignez que les gens, euh, les gens qui n'en portent pas puissent être stigmatisés, puissent être ostracisés? Euh, nous suivons, comme j'ai dit, les conseils du médecin hygiéniste en chef qui recommande fortement le port de masque, le port de couvre-visage euh, par tous les usagers, les usagers sur euh, euh, le transport en commun. Euh, je crois que la population de l'Ontario s'est montré solidaire durant ces dernières semaines euh, en restant chez eux ou en portant le masque ou le couvre-visage lorsqu'ils sortent pour euh, le travail essentiel ou faire des courses, etc. Euh, donc, euh, j'espère, je vais continuer à croire dans cette solidarité, ce sens de solidarité de la population ontarienne et euh, les gens vont faire ce qui est nécessaire pour protéger, euh, pour protéger les autres. Et vous dites qu'il y aura donc des nouvelles normes dans les transports en commun, moins de gens, une distance de deux mètres. Euh, comment, comment vous allez appliquer tout ça dans les faits? Eh bien, on a reçu la lettre euh, du médecin hygiéniste en chef qui donne ses recommandations, ses directives. Le ministère des Transports avec le ministère de la Santé, le ministère du Travail va développer d'autres directives pour et, et va communiquer, en, on va travailler avec les intervenants du secteur du transport en commun pour développer des directives euh, que les, les, les réseaux de transport municipaux vont appliquer euh, dans, leur, euh, dans leur ville et dans leur communauté. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Merci.